Hi everyone, and welcome to another segment of Fairy Tale Games Battle Royale. Today we'll be talking about basic combat. So when you begin the game, you'll pick a character. In this case, we are going to use Red. So I'm going to take your character card. I'm going to have her corresponding tactic cards, but I'm going to leave them in dormant positions, so I can't use them yet. During combat, uh, there's a way to uh, ready them to make them active. Um, of course, I pick a character board. Um, that corresponds with red and of course she, there's her profile picture there and her name there just to make sure I got the right one um, Your traits area is right over here reputation is not a trait. So remember that um, So intelligence strength willpower magic persuasion uh, when you use uh, use traits uh, you could use them towards uh, abilities uh, different kind of cards like items uh, weapons uh, for different quests. A lot of different ways you would need traits. Um, traits actually correlate with your health. So, for example, Red has 20 health. So when you begin the game, you will have um, 20 traits to distribute any way you want. Not reputation, because reputation is not a trait. So I would be, let's say for this example, crudely, I'm going to just throw traits around like this okay so um, a good practice would be to take a look at your uh, character card and say hey this ability is right here for red is in uh, intelligence she has uh, in her super moves intelligence and willpower so I, I should probably distribute it by, more bias towards her abilities now I wouldn't put everything in here uh, because there might be items or uh, action cards in the game that I uh, acquire that will use, utilize magic or strength, something that Red is not focused on. So uh, I definitely want to have that available for me. There's item slots over here. So uh, with items you can put uh, equip weapons or basic items or character items uh, that will help you in combat. Uh, one one rule though is you have to have equipped it before you enter combat. So in uh, the quest mode, basically. Uh, so for example, if I want to utilize Jade Sword, I would have had to equip it first, and then enter battle. I can't just during the middle of battle say, "Oh, I'm going to equip it." Um, that won't work. Um, good idea is if you don't have any um, any types of armor on, I would just put a uh, health potion over here just in case when you enter battle you might want to use it and you could play that card anytime while you're in battle your opponent's turn or your turn um, over here you have your your different stats they're variable between uh, every character so every character will have some kind of variation um, so we talked about health uh, movement right here so during quest uh, mode Red can move up to five spaces. Uh, she's in the mercenary faction, and she has zero weaknesses, and she has zero elemental uh, power. So um, the, these things are like fire, ice, uh, holy dark, uh, lightning. So basically, uh, if let's say she had a weakness of fire, it would show a weakness of fire. It would show a fire icon right there, and if someone attacked her with a fire uh, a fire status on their let's say uh, fierce attack then she would they would get a plus one against her uh, because of her weakness uh, so she has her signature moves here and her super move here but we'll talk about that in a second let's first take a look at the combat deck uh, so we can kind of identify certain cards in the game so this is your combat deck uh, it's a community deck, so both you and your opponent will share this deck for draws and for um, gaining cards for different attacks and defenses. Um, before we really get into that, let's take a look at some of the uh, uh, key cards in the game. Now, there are four uh, different types of cards. Uh, these are called sub-cards. Um, for example, here's a heal, here's a cure, here's escape and here's a tactic so these you could play if you have these cards in your hand uh, you can play these 
anytime you want on your opponent's turn or on your turn. Um, heal, uh, basically, uh, when you take damage, of course, you're losing traits because your traits are your health. Um, heal can uh, help you regain that by... Um, it's kind of random because it's like uh, a heal potion that you find or that you have is uh, going to be different sizes, different... Um, different amounts for uh, for you so you roll a d6 uh, whatever the value is you gain that um, cure is uh, any status ailments uh, like uh, poison or stun during battle you can get uh, eliminate those plus you gain a, a nifty three traits just for uh, using it so even if you don't have a status ailment you could use it just for the game Escape is a really good card. In our earlier iteration, it, it, it differed greatly. The official escape card uh, basically has a great uh, strategic element to it. So you can play one trait, which is equivalent to one life, uh, or one health point. You can play one trait at, uh, at the minimum to try to escape. If your opponent sees that and doesn't want you to escape, they can play equal or greater amount of trade points to prevent you from escaping. So you're going to have to figure out uh, what you're willing to invest in um, in your trade points to escape. So if you say, okay, I want to spend five trade points because I'm going to outthink my opponent because I don't think they're going to invest that much into trying to uh, prevent me from escaping, then you can try that. Or you can use it as a bluff to try to bluff your opponent or to make them spend extra trait points to prevent you from escaping. Then of course you have your tactic. Uh, your tactic card lets you ready your uh, character's uh, tactic uh, uh, abilities. So as you re recall, here let's move this, bring back the board, bring these back. So as you recall, you have these uh, tactics over here. So uh, if in your hand you had the, uh, the tactic card and you played it, you could pick one of your tactics and ready it. So let's say I take uh, hack and slash from red and I ready it. So actually I can use this anytime during the game, depending on, or during combat, depending on what um, the ability says. The great thing about this is once it's ready, I don't have to use it now. I can save it, and so when I enter combat again, uh, maybe in a different duration of the game, it would be already readied. So I don't, I don't have to have uh, a tactic card in my hand to utilize it. Uh, of course, I could, uh, if I am very lucky, or if I plan this correctly strategically, I can ready all of them and have them available for future combat. Of course, if red dies, then that's moot because. You can't use these if she's dead. Now that we talked about the uh, four sub uh, sub cards from uh, combat, uh, let's talk about when you start combat. When you begin, you and your opponent will draw five cards. Now, whoever initiated combat during quest mode, they will go first and they will be on the offensive. So I will draw five cards. Uh, if you notice, these cards are different than the four sub uh, sub cards. Let's talk about this. Um, these all these cards have the name of the uh, card here, and they're different names uh, like fierce, slice, reverse, lunging, death. Uh, these are very important because they may or may not relate to your signature move. Um, there's this little emblem here. It's a red circle on the right, blue circle on the left. You notice that they're kind of everywhere. Those are uh, quick references, and I'll explain that in a second. And each uh, card will have a uh, ability on the bottom. So these kind of cards are your meat and potatoes of the combat deck, because, like I said, um, this is a community deck. So you'll all be using these somehow, some way. Now, for example, you'll have cards that, that are pretty good that say, spend one trait to do three attack damage to your opponent. Now, remember, your traits are your health, so you're going to have to be very strategic when you do combat. 
And of course you have stuff like heal or you have armor that you could possibly have, uh, have equipped already or heal potions that can help you regain. So you're not, you're not just killing yourself slowly. You're actually there, uh, just pre-planning ahead for combat. Um, you have the weaker ones that are like, you know, spend one trait for one damage, but they also offer an alternative. And we'll talk about this in a second. Um, you have stuff that adds status, like lunging adds the pure status to any single attack. And then you have stuff like this one, death. This is defend from three, three attack damage. So you'll have defense cards. But because of the nature of combat, um, you know, Trinity wants you to uh, fight to the death. So during combat, the combat deck is actually favored towards offense. So if you want to play defensively, you have to think strategically and really uh, manage your traits and have a combination of good uh, sig uh, signature moves, super moves, uh, action cards, all those um, thoroughly planned ahead when, you, when you're fighting. Now, let's take a look at the character board again. Let's look at the signature moves. Now, if you notice, uh, Red specifically has Spinal Chop, Goody Basket, Falling Hatchet. These are her signature, specific signature moves, and they have requirements over here. So if you get a Fierce plus a Slice, you can do 5 damage. You know, a uh, goodie basket requires three, a hidden, a holy, and a bite, and you can have, gain five health or traits. Uh, falling hatchet, jumping, fierce, and slash, and you can do five bleed damage. Now, um, for this example, let's take a look at my hand. Um, now, I could play this individually, because, um, let's talk about turn really quick uh, while I'm at it. So, if I'm... Let's say I begin the uh, the combat and I am on the offensive. So I I attack. Okay, so let's say I attack with the Fierce. Um, fierce says I spend one trait to deal three attack damage. Okay, so let's say I attack with this. Now my opponent has a reaction phase. So they can play a defense card or use an ability or uh, action or whatever they want in response to that. Uh, let's say they don't have a defense so after that then this attack goes through they take three attack damage and this move resolves so it goes into the discarded area now it go now after that happens it, after the resolution it's still my attack phase because uh, I'm still leading the attack so I can choose to play another attack so let's say I choose to play this so that's Play one trait to do one attack damage so if that happens uh, you know same thing there's a reaction phase and uh, let's say they don't do that they don't uh, they don't defend or do anything so they take that and this is discarded then I can choose okay do I want to attack again do I want to save these cards if I don't want to press on or if I don't want to keep going on um, and attacking then my attack turn ends and I would, uh, my opponent and I would draw back up to five cards, and then it is my opponent's turn to attack, and I'm on the defensive. Uh, so, my my initial like for this example, I'm attacking first, uh, so that's my turn. Then my opponent has their attack turn, so that's their their turn. When it goes back to me again, that's considered a complete round. So at the beginning of my following turn that's considered one round and that's important because there are certain cards that uh, target rounds versus turns so keep that in mind now um, since I was on the topic of drawing up so let's say my attack is over and um, normally I would draw up to five cards and same with my opponent but if I say hey you know what I don't really need these two cards you can burn cards. So basically, you would discard a card that you don't want. So in this case, I discard these two. But I would spend two traits, one trait per each card I don't want. So I'm burning these cards. So now, with only one card in my hand, I will draw four more cards. So draw up to five cards. Now, when we were talking about attacks and defense, 
there's uh, another thing you probably are thinking. So let's say I play this this card. So pay one trait to deal three damage. Now what if my opponent just plays a defense card? There's something called pressing your attack. So basically, if I, I notice, okay, I spend one trait to do three attack damage, and I really want this attack to go through. Uh, so let's say they, had a, uh, they have a defense card of three. I can press my attack by spending at least one trait. So um, let's say I spend one trait to try to force this move through. So they, uh, so basically, if they don't do anything and I force this move through, the three attack damage goes through and ignores their defense. Now, another thing that they can do is they can hold their ground. So let's say they had a defensive card and they could have played one trait. Uh, so if I played one trait here, uh, they had to be equal or more than this. So let's say they play, they play a trait. If they play a trait, whatever their defense is, stays. Now then it goes back to me again. I can keep pressing on and play another trait or I could play multiple traits. Let's say the first time around I play two traits, they would have to do that again. So they'll get another opportunity to do that. Uh, and basically pressing your attack and uh, resolves when both you and your opponent do not press further, do not spend any more traits. Um, this is a useful tactic for, um, or use, useful strategy. Uh, I should say for if someone has very low energy and this is pretty much your killing blow and you want this to go through or um, for example you might have a card in your hand that has uh, that gives that attack a status effect uh, this one is pierced but let's say this was poison and you wanted to really poison your enemy so you would press this attack force it f uh, through and then you can play the status effect because status effects are going to be uh, these kind of status effect cards are kind of like if you play any deck building games like an instant uh, ability or instant status so I could play this beforehand to scare my opponent let them know um, maybe they want to defend this right away you want them to waste the defense card because you might have something bigger up your sleeve or you could just save that as a surprise factor so you play that they don't defend and then you go boom and they get that status effect uh, I mean you get that status effect on this card uh, as a bonus for uh, well, for good play so let's take a look back at the character board under signature moves um, we went over all these already but if you notice on spinal chop uh, it requires a fierce plus a slice and it'll allow you to do five attack damage to your opponent well in our previous hand we do have a fierce and we do have a slice so basically if I wanted to I could use these two cards play them in combination like that and I will be act using my signature move now what's a great thing about this is it does not cost any trade points to use this signature move so essentially this is a zero cost five attack damage but of course your opponent can try to defend it um, but so signature moves are really good because you can use them um, on your attack but you kinda maybe you want to use some of your uh, weaker moves to uh, bait them to use up their defense and then blossom with a powerful signature move now of course there are other signature moves like goodie basket that heal you or give you more traits and uh, some like falling hatchet that require three different types of cards which is harder of course um, and then you do something like five bleed damage which is uh, much greater um, different status uh, statuses you can do to your opponent um, are bleed pierce lunge dizzy and stun and on the cards themselves they'll kind of give you a explanation of what that is uh, super moves are pretty interesting they're your, like your desperation move so it's think of them as your last ditch effort um, to s survive or to turn the tide around because you know in the next turn of the turn after you're gonna die so um, basically it's when your hit health points is very low so in red's case now there's a misprint on this card specifically but um, 
for red, it should say, if your health point is five or below, spend one intelligence and one willpower to search the combat deck for any two cards. That could actually turn the tide of the game. But what you're looking at is something like this. So you, you're basically down to five or below. So let's say you're, you look like that. So if I were to activate my super move, I would spend these two. And I only have three health left. So that is a big risk. But like I said, depending on my strategy, it might help me win the game. And depending, of course, on my opponent's health. Now, uh, some of you are probably worrying about, okay, well, let's say uh, I win the combat and this is what I'm left with. That's not, uh, do I regain health? You do not regain health after the end of combat um, because this, the game is about survival. So, but if you recall during uh, quest mode, there, there are certain lands that you would uncover that you can tap into to regain health. Uh, to regain traits, which is your health, uh, as well as there are items and different quests you can do that when completing them will allow you to gain more traits. Now you can never gain more than 30 traits uh, and there's a reason for that and we'll explain that in a different segment. Another thing I want to talk about is uh, there, there are two different types of uh, sub abilities here, um, like for example this one says spend one trait to do one attack damage to your opponent, which you know, or to switch your main character with a support character. Okay, so switching. Um, basically, let's say in my party, I have uh, Red as my main character, so I'm able to use all of her abilities, or I have Big Bad Wolf. Big Bad Wolf will be considered my support character. I can't use any of his abilities. Now, if I had this, this card, I could spend one trait, and I can switch and make the Big Bad Wolf my primary and Red Riding Hood my support. Uh, you re still retain your same amount of traits, you still, re you know, which is your health, so you're probably wondering, well, what good is that? Well, I can, then what basically what happens is I won't be able to use Red's equipped items, but I can use Big Bad Wolf's equip, uh, equipped items, as well as I can use his signature and super moves, because in my hand, I may have cards that are specific to his moves rather than hers, and it might be more advantageous for me to do that. Um, now, likewise, there are cards that have something called knockback. A uh, knockback means that, let's say, my, my opponent does knock back on me. And let's say I have Red, Big Bad Wolf, and maybe also Dorothy. So what happens is if a uh, knockback go uh, comes in play, they can choose which one of my supporting characters uh, I would replace my main character with. So basically if they say, well, you know, I, I knock back Red and make Dorothy your main. Well, that would definitely mess me up, especially if, let's say, Dorothy has nothing equipped or uh, Dorothy's signature moves or super moves um, have nothing to do with the, you know, the uh, current status of my traits or cards in my hand. So, for example, here's a knockback card, Vortex. As you can tell, this is a defensive move. So, basically, you would play this in response to someone's attack, and by knocking them back, it... Uh, pretty much negates their attack. So let's say they attack me for three, I play this and I knock their main character back uh, before their uh, character attacks me. But the one caveat is if they don't have any supporting characters, so they don't have any other characters in their party, I can't use knockback. It won't do any good. Okay, one last thing about combat uh, is I know we talked about escape cards. Now, escape cards, they're very few in the combat deck. So instead of uh, hoping that you'll get one of these in your hand, there's another way to leave battle. Uh, it's, it's called turning tail. So to turn tail and leave, uh, it will have to happen on your turn. So when it's your offensive, your, your attack phase, basically, uh, before you do anything, you say, I'm going to spend one trait point and turn tail. 
So that's basically using a d6 to play your luck. So you'll roll against your opponent. The highest wins, so if I roll a 5 and my opponent rolls a 1, I win. So I can escape and just like that, I can leave battle and go back into quest mode. Now, if let's say I lost, okay, I rolled a 2, my opponent rolled a 5, then what happens is I'm stuck in battle, but if I had an if I had something equipped, um, let's say it was the uh, the uh, jade sword over here, or a uh, health uh, health uh, or a, a cure potion, I mean, or a heal potion, then I would lose that. I would lose one equipped item. So there you have it. That is basic combat. Uh, in our next segment, we will talk about more advanced ways of battle. So uh, if you have any questions, be sure to contact us and uh, looking forward to see you in our next segment.